Next to the new Brighton History Center, beside the train tracks, is a small patch of ruby red rhubarb, maybe 20 feet long. But there used to be 40 acres of rhubarb grown here. From the 1920s to 1980s, this property was home to Lakeside Berry Farm. Wayne Searles remembers harvesting the rhubarb there when he was 13 years old. And every, every boy in the, in the whole town worked here at one time or another, including me. We'd uh, chew on that so he wouldn't get so thirsty. Working on a hot day, just have a hunk of rhubarb like a cigar, you know, and just chew on that. This Sunday from 1 to 4, the new Brighton Area Historical Society is hosting the 19th Annual Rhubarb Fest. Rhubarb pies, crisps, jams, and more will be on sale. Wayne Searles and other members of the Historical Society will pick the original rhubarb from Joe Hip's farm. Most of the plants were moved to Elk River when he sold it. Key's Cafe and Bakery helps them bake the desserts. It's the original uh, ruby red uh, rhubarb that we pick. We pick it on Saturday. Rhubarb Fest is on Sunday, so it is super fresh. Kim Odie is author of the Rhubarb Renaissance Cookbook. She says rhubarb is part of Midwesterners' heritage. It's a vegetable of the north, a fruit of the north, that uh, we're, we're really known for. And it's wonderful to see people just focused in on, on this thing that's very unique to us, to this, the northern regions, and, and just celebrate, you know, gather around food. Rhubarb is a vegetable, though it's mostly used as a fruit. Only the stalks are edible. The rhubarb leaves are poisonous. It's tradition to mix the sour stalks with sugar to make some sweet desserts. In the New Brighton Area Historical Society's cookbook, you'll only find desserts. Strawberry rhubarb coffee cake, rhubarb crisp. My, my wife makes, makes that. Rhubarb Fest is also a chance to remember the many faces of New Brighton. It's been home to farmland, meatpacking plants, and stockyards. The Historical Society will be giving tours of the train depot and newly renovated caboose. Wayne Searles has fond memories of the old downtown. That's what I remember, the downtown New Brighton and all the, all the old buildings that we had and what, what we did. The entertainment has changed. The old New Brighton is different than what it is now. Rhubarb's popularity has fallen over time. Sales are way down from its peak in pre-World War II times. Only about 1,200 acres are still grown in the U.S. each year. Kim Odie has developed some recipes that put rhubarb in the main course. Her savory rhubarb dishes are winning over some new fans. My, my favorite recipe in the book is one for, it's a kale salad. Every time I've made it, uh, it people kind of go, kale, rhubarb, and then they take a bite and they go, oh, this is really good. This isn't the first time rhubarb has been given a new purpose. Nearly 5,000 years ago, the Chinese used rhubarb for medicine, believing the roots aid digestion. Kim Odie says in the 19th century, Europeans experimented with it as food. They, they planted it to have more medicine, but it was a good Norwegian housewife who said, I bet we could make something with that. At Rhubarb Fest, Wayne Searles will be telling stories of New Brighton's past. He doesn't want the old ways to be forgotten, even as times change. I have a lot of boyhood, boyhood memories, and uh, you know, if, if somebody doesn't keep up the history, you forget it. We find that now, where if we don't talk to some of the elderly people, by that I mean older than me, uh, that's going to be gone. So we try to get as many stories, as many pictures as we can. Talk to Wayne Searles at Rhubarb Fest and the other Historical Society members and learn more about New Brighton's rich history. For the North Suburban Beat, I'm Rachel Siegel.